Hello, Ben. Could you give an introduction about yourself? Hi there. Uh, my name's Ben. Uh, I am 21 years old. Um, I've been in Hustlers University or the real world for about two years now, um, learning lots of experience. Um, I run a couple of businesses um, which weren't actually successful and I didn't actually have the confidence or the ability, what I felt like to do it until I joined the real world. Okay, that's a very good start. So I'll ask something I don't usually ask other people. Because of your time in HU and in the real world, you say you've been in for two years. So how have you seen it evolve over time, over those two years? So I remember first when I, um, I actually had a message from Andrew Tate himself. Um, I dropped him a message, you know, out of the blue and was wondering what, you know, what can you benefit from this as it wasn't advertised really publicly yet um, and realized through him that I've got nothing to lose and all to gain. Um, and then through there, it started off quite small and then everything grew, extension of campuses, challenges, rewards, more sort of things that you can benefit from it as an individual and also help others grow as well as well as yourself. Um, the other thing that I sort of felt throughout the time is, is the coaches, they become more developed themselves. There's more access, there's more help. You're not alone as soon as you're put in there. You've got help, you've got guidance, you've got whatever your tools you need to succeed. Yeah, very well put. So which campuses did you end up going into? Which ones helped you the most? Um, I started off actually in the marketing campuses. That was one of the first campuses around. Um, and... For me, that was one of the main things were, which I was struggling with with my own business. Um, as soon as I started the real world, I started a personal training business. And my main problem was is I was exempt and sort of closed in from the actual world and I never knew how to present myself to others. And that sort of gave me the confidence and ability to do that. The other, the other thing that I realized throughout it as well is uh, Tate Lessons. Tate Lessons was something that was available and it actually was almost the fundamentals to running and being successful, not necessarily a business, but to be a successful human being in your, in whatever endeavor you go into and key principles you should follow by. Um, mm -hmm. From there, I've really gone into whatever I can. They're all available. So you're not limited to anything individually. I went into the crypto campus as I started and noticing trends within it. I had a little bit of success, but not what I permanently stayed into, if that makes sense. I sort mm -hmm. of diverted off that. Um, also, recently, I've been trying the new uh, AI campus. That was um, such an experience as well of going from no knowledge at all, how it can actually benefit myself and my business. All right. <clears throat> and how did you implement all those lessons that you've learned? I think the main thing is is that because the real world's there 24-7, 24 hours a day, it's always there. The lessons are always there. I can always refresh. I can always go back to them. And I don't feel rushed. I thought the, um, the main point for me was that I had to be successful. I had to make something of myself. And it was how, is, how am I going to do it? And for people that are creating these courses, the campuses, etc., they've had that success. So almost I had to adapt that to my life and obviously change and adapt it. However, from there, it was self-explanatory. I had to work it harder than I ever could imagine. And then I had the financial freedom to help out the people that were struggling around me. Um, I grew up not, uh, I grew up in not the best place. However, my mum has managed to move on, grow herself and look after me. And now it's my turn to give back to her and provide to the loved ones around me that have given me help in the past. Good. And uh, the lessons from the real world that you've learned, how did they apply to your business? How did you apply them? How did you implement them? So I think, for example, lesson one of uh, Tate lessons is speed. Do everything with speed, not necessarily haste, but speed, act with confidence, act with speed. If you're too busy delaying things, then that's when you know accidents happen, you miss the trends, you miss the opportunity, seize it. From day one, I've almost taken all the lessons and tried to implement them in, from all the way to speed, to all the way to how to deal with that awkward customer. And how do you, you know, there's lessons on every single part of aspect that you could be curious about, that you could be struggling with. 
there's always that part that you more would think, oh, well, what do I do in this situation? It's there. So mm-hmm. applying to my everyday life made it so much easier. And what is it you do? Um, so I run a personal training company. Um, that's one of my main uh, focuses currently. I also um, am into property and specifically block management of flats. Um, additionally, I started working with AI and using that to benefit both and also working with freelancing work to use that to my uh, benefit. When you say freelancing work, was that with AI? Uh, with AI, that's correct. Okay. It was uh, all about how to utilize AI to build on myself and other people's businesses as well. How do I help them? And by doing this, I was able to grow my confidence with it, my ability, etc. Okay. Let's start with personal training. When did that begin and how was that scaled? Um, so this was my first business. Um, my first initial conversation with Andrew on Instagram was I'm leaving my job, um, my nine to five job that I was working. With. Well, I was working from seven o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night every day for someone that wasn't myself. I have gained barely anything minimum wage i was just trying to work you know get the hours in get some reward and then i realized to myself that i'm doing all of this work and i'm not benefiting from it Mm -hmm. from there i started off by myself i had one client i trained them to the best of my ability and then i took the advice that i got from tate and all the marketing lessons that i had the thing that i started on first and implemented them i then grow to 10 clients And now I'm on about 30 clients and then expanded it to a different company too. So they can, so it's as a, as an actual business, other people benefit from it too. I've got multiple trainers that are are training different people at the same time. And it almost generates that passive income that I was taught about. Interesting. Uh, How did you recruit those trainers to work with you? I worked with some quite talented individuals. Um, but the also the other thing, so I, I looked to them because I knew 100% that they could do the job. And the other thing that is mentioned um, in one of uh, Tate's lessons is that finding someone good isn't necessarily the most expensive option. All it takes is someone to you to give them the opportunity to prove themselves. And they will prove themselves if you give them the opportunity and they can see the vision with you. Um, I also tried family. I have a cousin who was doing doing great at school. He went into personal training with a company. I gave him the opportunity to come work for me, and it grew from that. And this is specifically physical personal training, or is Um, it like lifestyle? uh, Both, actually. Um, So it started off just as personal training, then uh, then diversed from that, so I could almost appeal to a wider audience because everyone at the minute is on diets, et cetera. And I was thinking, well, if I Google uh, diet plans to lose weight, there'll be hundreds of them. How many are tailored to the individual? And how many are, for example, vegan specific diets or people that are very, very particular about what they eat, how they eat at certain times, like where does the food come from? How can I plan that and make their lives easier? So I appealed to a niche and then I covered the niche and then I started again and covered that part and it all grew from there. You go. And then what about the properties? And when did you get into that? So I started off, um, a client of mine actually got me into it. Um, I started working with him and he introduced me to the whole aspect of it. He runs his own business. Uh, and then currently I'm working my way up into a director's position within that business. Um, could go from the actual maintenance to the properties to looking at the leases and developing that through there. Um, if anything, the re- real world taught me that I have to be confident within myself. If I didn't shoot for the opportunity that I had, I wouldn't be presented with the opportunities that are in front of me now and the different avenues and routes I could go. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. So you say you're 21, but you're doing very well for yourself. So congratulations for that. <laughs> it's very good too. <clears throat> and what's about the AI uh, freelancing? Tell me a bit more about that as well. So I started off um, in the AI campus when it first came out. Um, it piqued my interest because I'd seen so much about it in the news, especially about um, 
you see all the uh, in the metaverse in in the outside world you know in ai ai can basically do anything and at first i thought it was quite scary the idea of ai being so powerful and then i had the realization that ai can be adapted and used in order to benefit others therefore i help to um, you know boost my like income boost my business and helped others do the same explain a bit more <clears throat> what did you use specifically in terms of ai for that was it oh, image generation something else so one of the main things that i used was um in the ai campus they show you how to create videos and things put them together not like amateurs but properly dedicate yourself to the video and make it look professional um, one of the things I started doing is on TikTok using CapCut and how to appeal to my following base, how to increase my following base. That was one of the first lessons I went into was because I learned how to do it. And then I thought, how can it apply to me? I applied the lesson to myself and I benefited from it. From there, I went on to image generations and thought, well, what can I, what could I do with the image generations? I could use the images, I could create them about current trending topics, apply it to social media, created a whole new platform on YouTube, started making my own small, small clips, 10, 20 seconds long, about current affairs, current things that are going on in the world, and how, and how AI can almost bring that reality, bring it to life, if that makes sense. Okay, very interesting. Uh... And you acquired clients for that, how? It was, so by using social media, social media is very vast. Um, for example, for myself with the personal training, um, with the AI, I was putting it all together, make it look a lot cleaner, make it look more professional. At the end of the day, no one wants to, no one wants to deal with someone that is unprofessional. When they expect to come to you, they expect professionalism, it's a workplace. Um, especially with personal training, typically you pay quite a lot of money for the sessions, for the, for the experience, if you will, for the potential outcome of it. You don't want someone unprofessional training you. You want someone that is there to guarantee your results, to do whatever they can in their power to help you. And by making the videos cleaner together, it helped me a lot. The other thing that I used AI for was designing my logo. I thought I'd have to go to a professional or rather someone that speci uh, specifies in that subject. However, I learned I could do it myself and make it so much easier for me. Right. Very nice. And how is that translated to monetarily, all those things you're doing? Um, it started giving me confidence throughout the years. Uh, for like When I started off my personal training journey, um, I was living in a place by uh, with my ex-girlfriend. I started off and I was really struggling myself. And from there, it gave me the confidence that I can do better within myself, with my business. So things started growing. I started um, earning more clients. Um, and it put me in a place where now I can quite comfortably sit at. Um, it's like yesterday I had a massive garage bill for my car. And I was like, oh my God, like before, I was always worried about them. Now I have to be able ability to pay that. And then, you know, I can I can sit comfortably and put my money into something I believe in with investments, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. And a bit more specific, are you comfortable revealing the figures you made from those projects you've been doing? Of course. So um, typically on a personal training basis, it can be between... Because obviously client availability, new clients coming in, it generates quite a nice income at the end of the month, coming between about four and five thousand a month around that period. And then we look towards the uh, property work. Depends on how much I do. I always try and work as hard as I can within that. Um, the other thing is, is it's passive income as well. So I don't necessarily have to focus on um, working it all the time. And that brings a nice sum around two to three and then finally with the ai and the freelancing um as i said i'm starting off with it but it's starting off at quite like a nice little balance around 400 pounds a month mm -hmm. around that period and the 400 pounds even though it's just starting it helps out massively good so in total 
since you've joined the real world, how much money have you made? In when I first started the real world to this current point, I'm sitting around fifty to sixty thousand. Mm-hmm. However, more recently in the last three months is where I've really sort of scaled it up, um, where I've earned thirty thousand within those that last three months by properly dedicating myself and applying every single lesson to myself rather than just studying. If that makes sense. All right. So you're doing very well for yourself as a twenty-one year old. Good. You have to try. <laughs> mm-hmm. And how different is your average day now then compared to before you joined the real world? Um, I remember before the day before I did it, um, I was actually, I finished work was my last day of work. And I was thinking to myself, what do I do now? I was sitting on the sofa. I was quite, you know, I was almost quite lackadaisical, quite bored. And then I thought I'd take it upon myself to join from there. I was busy all the time. And then today it's where I'm up at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, actually working at seven I wake up at five exercise work at seven all the way through till five in the afternoon i have an hour's break and then straight on to the next session straight on to doing the next thing i finish about 11 o'clock at night so whilst actually doing the same hours i'm earning well a lot more than what i would before by working for myself mm-hmm. and having the confidence that the real world has taught me to have right. So since you're on this trajectory, where do you see your life heading in the short term, medium term and long term? Uh, short term, I I want to develop as an individual more. I want to focus on more personal goals. Um, having necessarily being able to provide for my family a bit more, dedicate myself and my goals towards my family by using the real world, etc. by using my financial income to aid them, to put them in a better position. Um, whilst currently growing my business is still um so about medium term i want to with personal training i want to have a wide enough network of people working underneath me that i can almost take a small step back from that and be able to divert my attention on my other projects of work for example the property um Mm. which i need to develop myself upon more uh learn a bit more about it too And also studying about the AI campus, I really want to develop that as I see that in the future. You know, there's not a lot of things that we can guarantee in life, but at the end of the day, people are always going to be using social media. AI is a great way of creating, generating things that the world hasn't even seen its full capacity yet. And I can't wait to be explore that. Uh, And then there's an interesting thing happening with Planet T as well, where I'm sure that will reveal some capabilities of AI. I was about to say, it's it's something special. It's something special Mm -hmm. that's coming. It's actually come now at this time uh, that we're speaking. But it is really, really exciting what, you know, the world has got to reveal itself and the things inside. Okay, so I'm happy to wrap up there. Uh, For people who are unsure about joining the real world because they're thinking it could be a scam for the $50, what advice would you have to them? Honestly, it was probably the best decision that I ever made because it taught me the fundamentals of everything to do with business, to being a successful individual. Now, you can't run a business well if you're not a successful individual and how to turn your mentality and mindset into something positive. Um, The other thing I'd recommend or say is that really anyone can do, anyone can start anything by themselves. But this, it aids you massively. It gives you the network of people. It gives you the lessons. It gives you put, you can put in how many hours you want and you still get better results every hour you put in. Honestly, it was the probably the best decision I ever made. So stop questioning and just get started. Awesome. I love that. And uh, for people who want to find out more about you or contact you, where can they do so? Um, so I advise you all to take action as in one of Tate's uh, speeches as well as etc in the actual real world the first thing is you do take action um so we currently have these hoodies going on sale uh they're all for charity causes so for parkinson's um we have nqg.fitness on instagram and tiktok and then feel free to email me on info.nqgfitness at gmail.com okay perfect we'll add those to the description of the video and why do you choose to do this for charity 
Um, so my nan started off uh, with Parkinson's a couple years ago uh, when I was quite young. And to be honest, I felt very help helpless. I wasn't able to provide anything for her. I wasn't able to help the cause. I was too young to be, you know, I, w I didn't have the emotion or the sympathetic uh, sympathy that I do now. And now I can actually have, I have the freedom to make a change. The real world has given me the capacity to make a change to the world. So just by selling, for example, hoodies that go to charity is something. It's something that's going to a good cause. It's helping people and it's making sure that every person that has the disease knows that there's a chance of it getting better. Damn. Quite something. <clears throat> Take action. That's it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so uh would like to do a follow-up with you in about three months and see how everything's going just in personal life and um, with your work, how the fundraisers have been going as well. Uh, just, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I'd honestly love that. Thank you so much. That would be great. Cool. So look forward to then and wish you all the best. God bless. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.